Morning. So what we're going to do today is we're going to practice some exothermic welding with the earth core product. You get many different types of molds. This, for instance, over here is where you've got incoming connectors from all four sides. For, for instance, it's quite commonly used for an earth mat where you've got ten more round joining and intersecting. Okay. What we're going to show you this morning is just a straight 10, 10 to 10. This is the, the, the most common. Okay. Uh, but you get lots of other ones, as I said. You can see um, each mold has, has specifies the molds and the weld metal size. So there it says CU150. So when you get a box of weld metal, make sure that the weld metal size is right for the mold. Okay, there's the weld, weld metal. Okay. Alright, so here's your mold. This one's still warm from the last burn, so I'm not going to put the, the handle clamp in here, but the handle clamp, once you put these guys together, so let's say for instance this one, once you put that together, the handle clamp goes into those holes, like this is done over here. Alright, so now you can do all sorts of weird and wonderful connections. So just for fun, we're going to do the, this twisted wire, this just twisted wire, earth wire. Back off the earth wire to the 10 ball round. Because uh, it's just to show you how versatile this is. So <clears throat> what you do is uh, if you look inside there, you can see the, the mold, the weld metal chamber. Okay, so this is still hot. So this is where your, your I think, if you can, it's, can you see? It's running. All right, so in the case of the 10 to 10 joint, um, you can see the weld metal chamber. You can see where the, the joint chamber is, and that's where your weld metal powder goes into. And here's the cap of the mold. So Andre is going to, you just close this slightly and leave a, about, a two, about a two millimeter gap between whatever the conductors are so that the weld metal can flow in between the ends of the join as well. So I don't think you've got a change in there. You need to shift this one along a bit. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And then we clamp it closed. There you go. Alright, so the ends are there. These tin caps are the next step. And you can just follow the instructions. Where are the instructions? Instructions that here, the summarized instructions come in these boxes, the weld metal boxes. But there's also an instruction book, which is what we're using now. So we're also feeling our way through this. Okay, so this tin, this is tin, so it melts at a very low temperature. It's used to stop the weld metal <coughs> from falling through to the, to the uh, copper before it's burnt because what's going to happen is the weld metal is going to ignite and melt and fall very quickly at extremely high temperature to join this, this copper. And apparently it burns at like 1600 degrees. Okay, So you just drop the tin cap in there, nice and flat. You should drop in fine. So according to the instructions, the next step, once to make sure this is clamped, eh? <clears throat> is you take your weld metal, remember, it has to be the correct size. Okay, and pour it nice and confidently into the weld metal chamber. Okay. All right. So now I suppose it's time to think about a little bit of safety. So just make sure this stuff's on my hands. I should probably have my gloves on already. Okay. So let me put my gloves on. Okay. Now they say you should make sure there are no flammable items too close to where the burn is happening. Okay, you don't want to burn yourself because as I said, this stuff burns extremely high temperature. So, the next thing you need to do is you need to take the small, don't worry, you need to take the small bottle and the big bottle and you pour the contents of the small bottle into here. Okay, 
and we're going to mix it well. Okay? This is your igniter powder. It's like in the movies, MacGyver style. Okay? And then if you look at the instructions, it tells you over here where to put where my thumb is, how to pour it. So it says starter material. Place half times the heap spoon on the edge of the mold and over the top of the weld metal, which is exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to take a heap spoon. Once this thing's open. Okay. This is the this is probably the the most the trickiest part of this. Okay. Half of a heap spoon. So you're going to take half of a heap spoon. So I'm just going to take there we go half of a heap spoon, and I'm going to put put some in there, and then a little, you little can, bit more yeah. of a row there. So that's fine. Okay. So you can see I've put the powder some of it onto the weld metal and then also drizzled it to be in line with the intake and then the, the exhaust if you like squirts out here, that's for safety reasons so it sprays out there but you can see this mold isn't closing properly because of that yeah it's just because of this ok alright then the next step per the instructions once again you close this guy up and you pour the rest of the half of the the heaped spoon onto this. Perfect. Okay, and Bob's your uncle. This you keep well away from the mold, apparently. Okay, so we're going to put this over here, flammable items away. Hopefully, the result is going to be this. This weld metal over here is going to melt and it's going to fall down into the bottom of the chamber at 1600 degrees and it's going to join these two conductors as the best uh, uh, electrical connection there is. Apparently a uh, clamp will only manage uh, 450 degrees uh, fault current for three seconds. This will, will manage a 1200 degree fault current for three seconds. I think the, I can't remember the fault current rating, but it's, there's a standard SABS rating that they claim for that. <coughs> so let's uh, give it a bash, okay? Gloves on, glasses on, flint igniter. They say that you must hold the flint igniter against the edge of this. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, it's a very quick reaction. Okay. Now, obviously, gloves, you cannot touch this mold. This is graphite, it's probably hundreds of degrees. Okay, so all you need to do now is open this guy up. You can see it's still glowing red hot in there. Alright. And if you want, you can either wait for it to cool on your own, or you can take it as it is. You can feel this blixum's hot. And you don't, you don't have to cool it in water. It can cool down on its own if you want, but we just want to show you the product. So there you've got an exquisite join of um, bare copper earth wire to the 10 mil round. Okay.